what do you think investors should be most excited about? Well, thank you, Kelly. It's a really important conference for us. In fact, it really shows the breadth of our presence in oncology. Uh, we're presenting data on an important medicine called Reblozil, a study, the COMMANDS trial, where we demonstrated that nearly twice as many patients can achieve independence from transfusion. These are patients with a form of cancer called the myodysplastic syndrome. Uh, Reblozil has the opportunity to be a new standard of care. It makes us really confident in the $4 billion plus peak revenue estimate we have for the end of the decade. But what's good is that we're also presenting really exciting data in cell therapy for Brianzi, our best-in-class CD19 CAR-T in a form of uh, cancer called chronic lymphocytic uh, leukemia. And we're taking a precision approach to lung cancer with repotrectinib, which comes from our turning point acquisition for a specific group of patients with lung cancer that have a mutation. So it's really a broad approach to cancer and it's the same approach we're taking to immunology, cardiovascular medicine. Right now, when I think about Bristol MySquib, we have the best pipeline we've ever had, and the company is really well positioned for growth. It, that said, I'm going to say something very unfair, which is, is it possible that cancer is not as exciting an area of biotech as it once was, and now we hear about weight loss drugs and we hear about Alzheimer's cures? And... Um, can you speak to that and whether you think the next major move for your company would, would be in the cancer space or in something different? Well, cancer remains an area with high unmet medical need. And we are approaching cancer uh, following a, a very broad uh, strategy where we're looking at earlier stages of the disease with our immune oncology agents. And we are going into new modalities like cellular therapies targeted therapies and our protein homeostasis platform, which is extreme, extremely innovative. At the same time, I do agree it's important for a company like ours to have a very diversified approach. And our, one of our strengths, in fact, is to have solidified our leadership in cancer, while at the same time, we've continued to work on cardiovascular medicines, another area where we are the leaders, immunology, with the launch of Sotik2, growing importance for us. And so our pipeline actually addresses areas of unmet medical need now across multiple therapeutic areas. Absolutely. And obviously, it's still very important to the president, who still has his cancer moonshots uh, in, the, in those prerogatives. So I'm curious as well if you've been following the Amgen, you know, the FTC suing Amgen over this Horizon deal. And the only reason that I ask is because if it were successful, and a lot of people think it won't be, but it could potentially chill M&A. And analysts have said the real impact could be on more established pharma companies like yours if they can't do M&A in order to backfill their pipeline going forward. Um, would it chill your future acquisition plans if this lawsuit is successful? Well, I can't comment on a specific uh, FTC position on one deal. What I can tell you is that for us, business development remains important. And we've demonstrated with the acquisition of myocardia, of turning point therapeutics, that while uh, when we acquire a company, we actually are able to accelerate the development of a new medicine and bring it to patients faster. So there is tremendous value in continuing to think about business development, not only as part of our innovation strategy, but it's clearly a way to bring more medicines to more patients faster. So it's an area we plan on continuing to focus on. An important area that, you know, I think your, yeah, your, your point is well taken. So let me just ask you what's going on with the shortage of cancer drugs. Has it ever been this bad? I think there's 12 drugs in particular uh, that there's a shortage of. Some say it's a national emergency chemotherapy and, and some other things affected? Well, it's a very serious issue. Of course, the concern is that a patient will not have access to a medicine they need at a very important time, which is clearly the case in cancer. So for us, we are extremely focused on ensuring that we have a reliable supply of high quality medicines uh, for patients, of course, in cancer, but across our portfolio. It's particularly important for us because we are launching so many new medicines. Our portfolio is evolving. So our supply chain organization works relentlessly to ensure that that doesn't impact our patients. Absolutely. So finally, and I know this will really be up to the next leadership, but what about artificial intelligence? Do you have any early thoughts and reactions? As to, and I should mention Michael Yee, and one of the analysts, obviously, who covers your space, thinks it's one of the most transformative things going on in biotech uh, that could have implications, for instance, 
in a future where drugs could go from machine to patent uh, with mi or to patient with minimal preclinical or clinical testing. What are your thoughts? Well, it's an area of intense focus for us. We've invested in this space for many years now, and I do agree that the use of artificial intelligence, machine learning, can transform, actually, our industry from discovery where we may be able uh, to discover new molecules faster with more precision. I believe there are tremendous applications to accelerating clinical trials uh, and then commercializing our medicines and obtaining real-world data.